any prettier in our state. What the public-private partnership has done in our state and in many all other states is push the Soviet style of education in place. Currently, 53 school districts have been utilizing the Soviet system called the five-year plan. In America, it's called high school redesign. Um, for the past three years on a voluntary basis. The reason this meeting today is so important is our legislature is in the process of putting the rest of the framework in place while we don't know what's going on so that by next year we'll be mandatory. If anyone has visited the Department of Education's website, every day that you go there, it multiplies exponentially with the information that's available regarding the high school redesign. Nobody in Louisiana wrote that stuff. That was written well in advance of this year. And it's just being hand-fed to overwhelm us. It's packaged beautifully. Doesn't read so well. The way the public-private partnership works is within, just within education, because it's invaded all, all aspects of our lives. But it involves, the partnership itself involves educators, parents, students, bureaucrats, business leaders, and union representatives. And union representatives. <laughs> These partnerships are created through legislation. So it doesn't matter who we elect, who comes and goes. These partnerships are here to stay. We have to get the legislation changed. We have to start screaming at the top of our voice so that they don't put the last pieces of this framework in place. Over time, it's become commonplace to think excuse me, that unions have a place at every table, although they shouldn't. It also has become a great idea, excuse me, a great idea to have business involved in directing the education of our children, but it is not. The goal of education in a free society is for the sake of acquiring knowledge in order that the individual is truly free to create whatever life he chooses for himself. Excuse me. I'm sorry. The goal of education in a Soviet-like society is for the sake of the common good of the state. I think Mayor Landry just talked in his speech about the common good. In this system, education is the outcome or standards is outcome or standards based so that the needs of the workforce are the needs that are fulfilled. It's all about the state, it's all about the, the labor that the state needs. So our high school redesign plan, how does that work? In eighth grade, let me reiterate, this is happening in our state, has been for three years. In eighth grade, the students are required to, to choose a career path. I have a daughter who just graduated from Texas A&M. I don't think she still knows what she wants to do. <laughs> By the way, that's why I wear the shirt. Not just in honor of her, but in honor of our warriors with the textbook wars. <laughs> They're an inspiration. So anyway, I don't know how an eighth grader is supposed to career, choose a career, but with this system, they have no choice. Up to now, they haven't been taught well unless they're in the elite level of, the, of each grade. So they don't have the skills they need to pass the ACT. They don't have the skills they need to even pass to the next grade. They're passing them, but they don't have the skills. So the guidance counselor now sits with the parents and the child and says, you know, it's just not college material. But luckily, we have this career path. And he can choose a career, and we'll put him, starting in ninth grade, in a curriculum designed to help him reach that career at the end of high school or community and technical college. Because believe me, they're not going to let him into four-year college. So the parent signs off on the document, which you can view online. 
that says at the bottom, I was not coerced into signing this. In bold print. So, and they're told, but don't worry, we're going to work with your child. We have tutoring programs. And they do. That's one of the initiatives is tutoring. And if at any point your child raises his performance to the point that we can put him back on that academic track, we will. But when you go on that Department of Education website, and I really encourage all of you to do it, look at the curriculums for all the different tracks. Half of the semester in ninth grade on a career diploma track seals your fate. There's no way possible a child is going to ever see, be able to succeed on an academic track after that. They're getting no academics. At the end of high school, a union job awaits them because, of course, the careers they're allowed to choose from are about 10 to 12. If they have government approved, government favored industries and, and jobs attached to the unions. So if they, though, feel that they have the physical and mental capabilities to go to community and technical college, they're allowed to go on that track. At the end of community and technical college, a certificate awaits them for a higher paying, federally approved union job. The reason they felt that we needed this drop, they, that we needed this redesign, by the way, is because of the crisis of the dropout rate. Now, the way the crises tend to go, I haven't looked at those stats, but I have my doubts. Part of this redesign is the national standards. National standards are based on international standards. That's why the debate is raging right now. Because the only international standards that exist come from UNESCO. This extends, this redesign extends into higher education. Unfortunately, I have to share with you comments made by Governor Jindal and House Speaker Tucker at a meeting of the NFIB which I attended. I was afraid that when I went, that they were going to say things that let me know that they were in favor of public-private partnership. And they did. Speaker Tucker was especially excited to let all of the small business owners know that the state was looking out for their workforce interests. That we have 60% of graduates from high school who go to four-year college. 40% of our graduates go to community and technical college. The state intends to flip those percentages. So when I asked him, exactly how are you going to flip those percentages? Not to worry. They're going to raise the admission standards so that fewer children qualify. They're going to raise the requirements for top so that fewer children can afford to go. And they're going to cut the monetary awards that children receive so that fewer of them can attend. That was chilling to me. And he was very excited about it, which was even more chilling. Governor Jindal stood up. He was excited to tell us how, in essence, these were not his words, but these were my interpretation, the authority for education is going to be centralized. That's what the Soviets said had to be done for their system to get put in place. Two ways that he intends to do this are by, the, by abolishing the Bessie Board. The Board for Ed, Elementary and Secondary Education is our voice at that level of government. We probably haven't used it very well, but they are elected. In abolishing that board, all authority will rest with the superintendent of education for the state who is appointed by the governor. So our only voice will be in which governor we choose. 